we learned anything from the 2020 pandemic and on, we know that G&G never stops making new guns. So you know what? Let's see what G&G has for us this time. What is going on Mayo Gang, it's Boaz here and we're going to be going over a very new and exciting entry into the Mayo ecosystem and right in front of me here we have the very new, very exciting G&G Enhanced Combat Machine SRF-16. Not just any run of the mill everyday combat machine, oh no, we're, this is a very advanced combat machine so we're going to go over what that means exactly. Like I said earlier, this is no ordinary combat machine, no. This is the enhanced combat machine. So we're gonna go and take a look at what that means exactly according to G&G. So with the SRF-16, what we get here straight off the bat is a polymer build. Yep, just like the original combat machine. But wait, it has an enhanced uh, milled receiver design. So if you look closely, you're gonna see a lot of those like aggressive like cuts, angular cuts to the receiver that look a lot sleeker, a lot more aggressive, a lot more cool than your typical run of the mill forged style looking receiver on an M4. Up here on the front of the gun, you'll see that you have a very nice looking sleek M lock rail that is made out of metal. And one interesting thing of note that I like to point out is if you look along the top of the rail, you're gonna see along the sides and also on the top of the Picatinny sections themselves, you're gonna see that they've actually cut out to reduce weight even further. They cut out sections of the Picatinny rail and they've included pockets along the actual Picatinny posts, I guess you would say. Uh, and honestly, it's a really cool little detail. It, I'm sure it makes the rail system already even more lighter than it already is. And overall, again, just looks really aggressive. You're gonna have M lock sections on your standard positions, three, six, and nine o'clock positions. And on the 45 degree angles, you're gonna see these very interesting looking rectangular kind of lightning cuts on it to make it look really cool. On the top, you're gonna have your standard GNG CAC style iron sights that are made out of metal. I like the look of these, honestly. Like, I would keep these on the gun. Uh, that's what I would recommend. It just looks very sleek, it folds down very flat. It's gonna stay out of the way when you're not using them. And moving down towards the bottom of the gun, you're gonna have the enhanced, enhanced trigger guard. If you have beefy fingers or if you're wearing gloves, it's just a lot easier to work with. And one of my favorite things on this gun is going to be their new designed polymer pistol grip, which you've seen in the past with their 308 series, their SSG-1 series, their CMF-16 series. Yeah, you're gonna get that pistol grip on the SRF-16, which honestly, I like it. It's just, it's very comfortable to use in my opinion. And I, again, I'll recommend keeping that on the gun. Moving towards rear, we have an ambidextrous charging handle because it's cool, it's enhanced, you know, cool. On the rear, we're gonna have a side folding buffer tube stock. Yes, you heard me right, it's a side folding buffer tube stock. We've seen these a lot nowadays in the real firearms world, it's been gaining a lot of popularity, and now it's coming over to airsoft, which is super cool to see. I really want one of these side folding stocks, they're super dope. And a tattoo that is a metal buffer tube and G&G's newest VB slim polymer stock, which actually has a ton of battery space. I have one that I use personally and it is an absolute dream to have on your gun. Couple last features of the SRF-16 that make it oh so enhanced are gonna be on the very front, you're gonna see a very bright orange plastic muzzle brake. Uh, it's not your typical A2 birdcage cage like you see in a lot of airsoft guns. They've went ahead and done a very classy looking muzzle brake, but why is it not metal? Why why didn't you go the way of KW Way and made a very nice anodized orange muzzle brake? That would have been so much cooler. I, I don't know why they didn't do that, but you get a muzzle brake, not eight two birdcage, I don't know, yeah, it's cool. And here on the bottom where the trigger is, you're gonna notice it's a very nice aggressive flat trigger that you see on a lot of, again, the CMF-16, the SSG-1, the 308 series. You're gonna get that same trigger on there and I think it's such a great little detail and it makes feathering and rapid firing the trigger on semi a little bit more easier. And one last thing of note about the side folding stock because we're gonna get into depth about this because it's just so damn cool is that there are no exposed wires when you fold the stock. It's just like the OG, a scar, BFC scar 16s and 17s that you see. Uh, when you fold the stock, there are no wires exposed at all. And this is a rear wired gun. Uh, ambi charging handle, let's see. Oh wait, hold on. Oh, locking bolt catch, hey, that's pretty good. But no ambi controls I see here with the selector. Oh, you got an ambi mag release. 
It's really small. Should have made it bigger, GNG. GNG, how are you gonna tell us this is an enhanced combat machine when the controls are not fully ambi? Come on. Now that we've thoroughly gone over the external build quality of the enhanced combat machine SRF-16, you might be wondering, Boaz, what about the internals? How enhanced are the internal components of the enhanced combat machine SRF-16? Well, if I can kind of sum it up in a nutshell, uh, basically how they've enhanced this combat machine internally is that they've taken a standard combat machine gearbox and added components of their fancier, more upscale G2 gearbox and started putting those components into a standard gearbox. You're gonna notice things like the 25K E-Freep motor that makes the trigger response really snappy and the rate of fire really fast. You're gonna notice things like the ETU that they've included, again, straight from the G2 gearbox, they put ported it into the combat machine so you can change up your firing modes if that's what you're into. They've also included a quick chain spring system and their integrated G2 MOSFET that's integrated, again, straight into the gearbox, which is really nice because having a MOSFET in the wiring of the gun makes it really cluttery on the back end. So it's really nice to see. But other than that, uh, that that's pretty much it. it. It's a combat machine at the core. It still has standard combat machine gear set and compression set. But again, they've added all these little fancy features to make it more enhanced. GNG has included a 90 round mid cap G2 magazine for us to use with the SRF-16. Thank you, GNG, for giving us a mid cap and not a high cap. Mid caps are the clear way to go when it comes to playing airsoft on the field. Just don't fight me on that, all right? Mid caps are better. If they made mid caps for LMGs, I would use mid caps for LMGs, all right? But anyway, the design of the mag is very familiar. It looks very similar to a very popular type of magazine that's widely used nowadays in the real firearms world. And I think it is a really cool and neat design. Usually when airsoft companies design magazines of their own creation, yeah, they can be kind of hit or miss, you know, sometimes they'll look cool, sometimes not, but definitely this mag is a better looking magazine overall. And one of my favorite things about this magazine is that it has uh, extended magazine followers. So this means that you will be able to feed every last BB out of your magazine, whereas with traditional mid caps, you're going to lose about five or six rounds per magazine because it needs that extra bit of pressure to feed BBs into the gun. Uh, so that's really good to see. Now, this gun also is using that enhanced cutoff feature like I said before, so you will need this magazine to activate it. If you use any other kind of magazine that's outside of G&G's G2 system, you are not gonna get that cutoff feature, so your gun's gonna continue to fire even after the gun has run out of BBs. So that's just one thing of note there. By far, the best thing about this magazine is that it's only 90 rounds. Now you might be wondering, Boaz, how the hell is only having 90 rounds a good thing in a day and age where we have 100 rounds, 120 rounds, 150 rounds, 250 round mid cap magazines? Well, because I like reloading, all right? Reloading is cool, it's fun on the airsoft field bring back cool reloads in airsoft. With all the enhancements done to the enhanced combat machine SRF-16, it chronos in at around 390 to 400 FPS using a 0.2 gram BB and has a rate of fire of 20 rounds per second using an 11-1 LiPo. You know, this is one of the very few guns that are not gas blowback or recoil or anything gimmicky that I'm actually very excited to shoot. So let's go shoot this bad boy. Let's do it. Okay, everyone, we're out here at the range with the new SRF-16 here. I got no optic on here because I forgot to bring it. But anyway, loaded up in here are 0 0.30 gram BBs because when I test guns, you know it already, I like to go heavy to try to fit, simulate a field condition out there down range, about 200 to 225 feet. I have a man-sized target, so you know the vibes. I got a level one light bow in here and we're just gonna start firing away. So let's give it a whirl. Okay, so first of all, the BBs are getting out there. Oh yeah, and also by the way, the hop up on this is like not even halfway adjusted. So if you want to load up theoretically, like 0 0.40 gram BBs, you could still lift it. Yeah, it's getting out there. And the trigger response is just really nice. Like, it does sound like a combat machine because it is using combat machine compression parts and gear sets. But the trigger response because of the flat trigger, the MOSFET, and the motor, it's just so responsive and snappy. Like, I'm able to snap, I, I'm able to suspend this all day. I, I'm gonna do a little full auto just cause. 
Definitely doesn't shoot like a combat machine, but it sounds like one. Got another mag into the gun right now. I'm just gonna shoot it just for funsies, just because it's so fun. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely getting out there for sure. I just wish it had a Type 4 barrel just for accuracy and a better fucking, but in theory, I mean, this platform is perfectly set up for like an SPR style build or a longer range AR build. I wouldn't say DMR because it's not, you know, M4s are not DMRs, but I mean, the trigger response is fantastic. And that rate of fire. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could easily just dump a whole mag through this. No, not, not that you would need to. Well, where are you going? Come over here. Thank you. All right, but anyway, not that it would need another, not that you would need to go full auto with it, but I mean, just because you can, you know? Yeah, like I'm just able to just constantly just lay down. <laughs> yeah. So after the shooting test, you might be thinking, wow, that really is a very enhanced combat machine. So how much does this enhanced combat machine cost in today's airsoft marketplace? Well, the GNG enhanced combat machine SRF-16 is retailing for $355 at Airsoft GI and make sure to use the Wamba Combo for the best savings in Airsoft. $355 for a combat machine and it's not even full metal. Well, I mean, I don't expect it to be metal anyways because GNG you have to pay like 450 bucks now for a metal GNG gun, but for the price of an enhanced combat machine, you can buy two regular combat machines, <laughs> but I will say, you will get double the performance. I mean, you do get a way better motor. You get a LiPo ready gun out of the box. You get an enhanced trigger unit that you can program your firing mode. You get a, I mean, you get the deal. I mean, they, they're pretty much trying to get this gun to bleed into the high end, high tier uh, style of airsoft gun while trying to market it more as a mid tier option. But my only complaint about this is that it's priced very similarly to uh, the CMF-16, which is like their higher-end uh, airsoft gun, uh, it is similar to price, but it does have the added feature of a folding stock, which we don't really see very much of at all in the modern airsoft market, which I think is super sick. Just the attention to detail that they have to this folding stock is really cool. But yeah, I mean, I'll leave it up to you guys uh, to see if the enhanced combat machine is worth all the enhancements. Uh, personally, for me, I think it's still a very banging gun on its own. I wouldn't really try to classify it as a high-end or a mid-tier gun. Uh, it's just, it is what it is, you know, and it does perform really well, especially uh, for the amount of money you're paying, it does perform at that level. Uh, I would definitely picture the SR-16 to be more like an SPR build that you can take on the go. Like you could pack this up really nice when you fold the stock, but you can still, with the barrel length, you can still have the range and accuracy of almost like a DMR range. I've, we have heard that GNG is gonna be coming out with a shorter nine inch version, which I'm very excited to see. I think that one's gonna be the real kicker there. Uh, but yeah, I think I think for how GNG is pricing it, I think it's it's fair, it's, it's very fair. No, no surprises, just very fair. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out our detailed overview of the new GNG Enhanced Combat Machine SRF-16. Let us know in the comments section down below if you think that all the enhancements that GNG has put into the Combat Machine line is worth the money, or hey, maybe you're still running the OG 2005 Combat Machine. Again, let us know down below. And if you like what you see, please make sure to subscribe to us if you haven't already, as we are gunning for that 1 million subscriber count and we need every subscription that we can get. And if you'd like to directly support us, please make sure to stop by Airsoft GI for all your Airsoft needs as it does help keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. And we upload every week. This is Boaz with Airsoft GI and we'll see you next time, Mayo Gang.